Welcome to the Lucy Ann Body Brewer Club, and we are delighted to be here with Deja Baines, who is the winner, the Youth of the Year, yeah. and Ron Green, who is the CEO here at, yes. the, at the club. And we're going to learn a lot about what goes on here. I think if you're like I am and, and you haven't been here, um, I have been here one other time, but we're going to show you a lot of the activities, a lot of the great things going on here. But Deja, we're going to celebrate you first because yes. this is the second year that you have won the contest, the annual contest for your speech, right? Yes, ma'am. Congratulations, Ron. I know you're proud of her, aren't you? Yes, I am extremely proud of Deja. She is a superstar and it was a very tough competition. She had two others that were really... Um, great candidates as well mm -hmm. and our runner-up was a fantastic uh, candidate and and actually this year they were separated by about one point this year. Wow. Deja um, is going to represent the organization coming up uh, uh, in a couple of weeks at the state competition. Mm -hmm. And are there representatives of the Boys and Girls Club all across the state who compete yes. there, the mm -hmm. winners come? Yeah. And you did that last year, right? Yes, ma'am. Was it fun? It was fun. I met a lot of new people and I got to make a lot of new friendships. And some people that I actually met are going to the school that I'm going to, so well, great. that's exciting. And you are a senior at Rocky Mount Prep. Yes, ma'am. And tell everybody what your plans are for next year. Um, my plans are to attend Winston-Salem State for nursing. For nursing, and you're gonna get a, a Bachelor of Science degree in nursing. Yes. Ron, how does that make you feel? Well, it makes me feel pretty good, so I know if I get sick at the club, she's gonna help me. <laughs> Yeah. But this is just an example of a young lady, and I want you to tell us a little bit about your story. Um, that without the Boys and Girls Club, you probably wouldn't be have these wonderful career plans, right? Yes. Well, tell it, kind of give us your background, Deja. Well, I started out staying with my grandmother, and it wasn't always as easy to stay with her because my mother felt lonely mm -hmm. so she would get policemen to come to my grandmother's house and take me away i would often hide in closets under beds and drawers just so so they couldn't find me mm -hmm. i was taken away then my mother went to jail a couple of times so i had to stay with my father and his girlfriends then I bounced around between there and my grandmother's house. Then when she got out again, she would come get me again. Um, eventually, I just stayed with my grandmother. She didn't try to come get me anymore. So she had another child, my younger sister. Then we went through like a custody battle of where me and my sister were going to stay because my sister was molested. So we stayed in like custody of the ward of the state for about four or five years. Mm -hmm. Then they granted guardianship to my aunt and my uncle. And my sister got granted guardianship for my grandmother and my grandfather. And when I was granted guardianship with my aunt and my uncle, I was introduced to the club. So that's how I got here. <laughs> Great. And tell us what happened from then on with the club. How did that change your life, Deja? My grades improved. My communication and how I told my story improved. My relationships with people around the community and my involvement in the community increased and improved. Well, and you are such a poised, lovely young lady. I mean, Ron, when I'm sitting here listening to her history, I would never have thought that she had been, that you had been through so much. Yeah, Daisy is uh, one of those remarkable young people who you look at and you, you really don't know her story until, mm -hmm. and, and she wasn't comfortable telling her story in the yeah. beginning. <laughs> and and I, I had to kind of pry a little bit just to get her to talk about her story because, you know, a lot of times our young people think, that's normal because that's what they see around them. Mm -hmm. And they think it's, it's nothing different from anyone else. And you have to get them to understand that 
you know, life doesn't have to be that way. Right. And by getting them to understand what they've been through, you know, there's there's an opportunity to, to better yourself from what you go through. And, you know, some take advantage of it. And Deja has taken advantage mm -hmm. of it and has moved on to not only compete for the Youth of the Year, but to, to you know, win that title back-to-back -back years, mm -hmm. but also be accepted into school and, and going on to college and pursue her dream of being a nurse. And mm -hmm. her love for and wanting to help people came from a young age, and she got that from her grandmother. When she lived with her grandmother, Deja tell the story about, you know, uh, being premature. Mm -hmm. You might want to tell them about it and how your grandmother used to take care of you. Um. I was born three months premature, wow, so I couldn't yeah. I couldn't breathe on my own at time. So I was always hooked up to machines. I couldn't drink from bottles because my I wasn't like quite developed. Mm -hmm. So my grandmother used to feed me with eyedroppers, um, things that look like eyedroppers. I don't know quite what they're called. Um, I wore like teeny tiny diapers. <laughs> and if like, I could just fit in yeah, hand. I could fit in my dad's hand. He told me that like his hand is like not even almost bigger than mine's, but I could fit in the palm of his hand. Oh. Um, like I went over my clothes and my shoes the other day because my grandma don't throw away anything, hmm. and it was like amazing. Like they were so tiny. Hmm. I was like, okay, look how big my feet are now. Hmm. It was amazing. But Ron, you're right, that, that culture of going back to seeing the nurturing and the care mm -hmm. from them, and now you're going to pay it forward by doing that for other people in your future career. Yes. What, what is the importance of people like Deja Ron at the club as role models for other young people coming here? Well, when you, when you have, you introduce them to others, like when I, come, I came to the club um, and took over the organization, many of the young people, they didn't know you know, where I came from and kind of my background. So this is Mr. Green, what a old Mr. Green <laughs> coming in here, you know, and trying to talk to them. And they really, you know, I tell them, I say, well, I understand what you're going through. And they don't really see that because they never see me in that environment. Mm -hmm. But when they see others who grew up in the same neighborhoods that they grew up, go through some of the same things that they've grown up, you know, around or involved in, and they see them overcome some obstacles and have some success in their life, then they begin to think that it's possible, mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's a, it can become a reality for them as well. And you know, and, and getting young people like Deja to see that hey, the world is yours. You know, you can achieve anything that you want to achieve if you really work hard and persevere, and, and, and you know, align yourself with quality people to help you through this process. Then you can become whatever you dream to be. Mm -hmm. But a lot of our young people have have forgotten how to dream and our goal is to try to get them to dream again mm -hmm. and, and get them to understand that what they want to be in life it can be a reality. Well and I'm sure that, that all the young girls look up to you Deja they probably think wow I don't and, and the fact that you came from what was your norm and, and mm -hmm. Ron I think when you said you know to get people to tell their story and break the cycle of no that's not the norm and not the way it has to be yes. You've got the power to do something differently. It is hugely empowering, and a lot of kids maybe haven't heard that before they got here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and Deja is one of those those rare individuals that once you set her on the path of of, of greatness, mm -hmm. I mean, she Great. she's I like yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, she's she's unstoppable right now. I mean, she's doing everything that she needs to do in order to make sure that that she stays on the right path and mm -hmm. do the right things because she knows she got so many young people that are looking up to her because right now she is the number one young person in our organization. Mm -hmm. She is the top. And, you know, she knows that she has, uh, you know, some, a bunch of shoulders that she's standing on and that they're standing on and we're standing on hers as well as far as an organization to say, this is success. This is what success mm -hmm. looked like. This is what coming from as she said, that, that, that closet drawer, shut mm -hmm. up in that closet drawer to represent our organization as Youth of the Year. Mm -hmm. I noticed too that, that the interaction between you two, um, Mr. Green doesn't mind sharing something if he thinks oh, it yeah. would be beneficial to you, like 
what to call people and you know yes instead of yeah and whatnot and those are, that's exactly what I did with my children growing up but you didn't have somebody to do so much of that so for you for you to almost assume the training and of, of a parent is such a valuable thing of benefit to you all because you know a lot of people never had anybody teach them how to interact ways that will help themselves with other people yeah. Are there classes here kind of in, in social etiquette and whatnot? Yeah, we do have some character and leadership mm -hmm. uh, uh, courses or, or what we call programs that we do. Um, but also, you know, it's an expectation of the young people. Mm -hmm. you know, and and it's, it's kind of difficult sometimes because when you grow up and you don't have to do those things, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden now you say, hey, you need to do it. And they've had 15, 16 years of practicing in a different way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of difficult, but once you see them, you get them to see that when you do these things, people respect you more, yeah. you know, and, and, and they, they learn that, you know, it's okay to do that, and mm -hmm. nobody's going to make fun of you or talk about you for doing it, you know, you're not going to call you names, but, you know, Deja is one of them that is mm -hmm. really look to learn the things that we're trying to teach her to better herself. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a break, and we're going to talk some more when we come back. And okay. I also want to learn more about what goes on at the club. Yeah. We've got some great video to show people, the some of the other students here and, and young people and what they're doing, so we'll talk about that. So stay with us, please. Mm -hmm. Are you just starting out on your own and want to be independent? Do you have a family and need a bigger home? Are the kids moving out and are you downsizing? First Carolina Realty can help. A one or two bedroom apartment or house for those starting out. A three or four bedroom home for a growing family. Rentals, sales, new homes, pre-owned homes, investment property in the city or in the country. Call First Carolina Realty. Now is a good time to make that move. Real estate prices are right, interest rates are low, and there is a fantastic selection of homes available. First Carolina Realty is a fully licensed real estate firm with offices at 3151 Zebulon Road in Rocky Mount. If you have rental properties and are tired of the headaches associated with managing them yourself, or if you're looking for a new management team to manage your rental properties, call First Carolina Realty at 252-985-2321. Visit our webpage at firstcarolinarealty.com. We will gladly help you with all your real estate needs. Hi, I'm Jean Almond of Almond's Drugs, and I want to invite you to be Almond's customer for your prescriptions. Our average pharmacy wait for your prescription is only 10 to 15 minutes. We have drive through windows at both locations. We will deliver your prescription free. Our friendly and very experienced pharmacists specialize in consultation, and we are locally owned and have been a loyal part of your community for over 70 years. Just make one phone call to us, and we'll make the transfer so we can start taking care of you. Welcome back to the Lucianne Body Brewer Club here on Riley Road and Deja Baines who is the second, for the second <laughs> time, the, the Youth of the Year here yeah. and Ron Green who is the CEO of the club and Ron how long have you been here? I've been here a little over three years now. Um, three years and I guess about three months now. And yeah. you alluded in the first part that you didn't have a perfect childhood growing up no. either. Mm -hmm. and, and that that, I'm assuming that that really helps the young people realize that you know where they're, yeah. a lot of their challenges. Yes, and you know, I, I kind of grew up just like a lot of the young people that go here. You know, we, have, we had a, a, one of those, some of those round table discussions and I mentioned to them one day, I said, yeah, I know what it's like to have your lights turn off. And they looked at me and said, Mr. Green, you had your lights turn off before? Yeah. I said, and I've been embarrassed when friends would come home and, and everybody's sitting there and they got candles around the place. So, you know, you, you, you go to some of these things, but a lot of times you think because of your environment and your friends are going through it also. Mm -hmm. Your friends don't have, a much, have much to eat as well until you get around some who, who live in a two-parent home or and have good, decent jobs, then you see that some of the things that they have, it's like, wait, wait a minute. 
You know, so it's it's possible to have these things, mm -hmm. and then you you know, you, and you have adults in your life to say, hey, that's why it's important to get your education. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important to go to school. That's why it's important to stay out of trouble. So we try to instill those things into the young people here, and this, and and get them to understand that this is nothing new, mm -hmm. as far as struggles that the people overcome. They've been doing it for centuries, and and you can do the same thing with the right help and the right influence. And Deja made a comment the other day. She was talking about school systems and whether this school was this school was bad or or or, or a lot of violence. And she said, "We just surround yourself with good people. Mm -hmm. Then you have good results." And I thought that was a really good statement coming from the youth of the year. Mm -hmm. you, know, <laughs> you know, surrounding yourself with good people really does help you make better choices. And a lot of people, though, it, it really um, it hurts their feelings when they're made fun of when they try to do well. And I think that's one area that you probably really have to concentrate on, too, that mm -hmm. if you're called somebody who's a nerd or hanging out with the smart kids and, and they get fussed at, which is, is really mm -hmm. unfortunate, but that's where, I mean, obviously you hung out with the smart kids or the kids who wanted to, to have a better life. But sometimes it's because, like, when people get picked on or certain people say certain stuff to certain people, the people who are bystanders don't say anything. You don't say, well, she's not a nerd just because she decides to do her homework and turn it in on time. Maybe you should do your homework and turn it in on time. It's not like if you're going to sit there and laugh, then it's not funny. You should speak up and stand up for that person mm -hmm. because for that day that you say that one mean comment could be their day where they decide to say, okay, well, I don't want to live anymore. Mm -hmm. You never know what a person is going through or how they feel. Their mother could be mad at them because they are making good grades. Like you never know how that person's life or home life is set up. So if you are a bystander and you're sitting there, you can't say anything or stand up for that person because maybe that person doesn't have a voice, then you're just as wrong as the person who's talking about them. Wow. Mm -hmm. and, and for you to say that and, and be role modeling, that is just huge, Deja. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many people that I'm sure you've reached out to and you might have been their only advocate and their only ally. But, you know, we all need to be aware that, that people, circumstances, if somebody's going through something difficult, they do deserve and need a friend mm -hmm. to stand up for them. Let's talk about some other activities here. And I want to show some of the things going on right now, Ron, in the club. Talk us through what, or tell us about what some of the different kids are doing here now. Well, during this time, they're doing what we call power hour. Mm -hmm. And that's P-O-W-E-R hour. And that's when there's nothing but homework and tutoring is going on for the entire hour. You don't hear any balls bouncing. Uh, you don't see anybody playing shooting pool or playing table tennis. You know, they're doing homework. And because we know that it is it is vitally important to their success that they get their homework, they you know studying for their tests, and and really at this time of the year, it's very important that they stay on the right track, mm -hmm. and don't deviate because we want them to progress to the next grade, or in some cases we have seniors in the club like Deja, who are getting ready to graduate, and we want to make sure that they are able to graduate on time, and also progress to the next grade on time and you know and during this time you know we also have staff who are here to help assist with tutoring help with the completion of homework and you know and, and making sure that they understand what their had the assignments that they've gotten from school and to be able to go back to school feeling prepared because you a lot of the discipline problems you have at schools are from kids who don't do their homework and they go back the next day and they know they don't have it so one of the things they do is get sent out of the classroom and they won't have to turn it in. Mm -hmm. I know because I've been that kid before <laughs> in my life. <laughs> you know, you didn't do your homework. Mm -hmm. But it didn't take but one time for my mother to find out that I wasn't doing mine. But in some cases here, you know, the schools are calling us to say, hey, they're not doing their homework. Can you help us out with this? How wonderful if they know yeah. that they've got this, this wonderful support system here with yes. you all. What ages are here of young people? We have five through 18 years of age. So we have, a, they broke it into groups. Five to seven year olds are in one group. Eight and nine year olds in another group. 10 year olds to 12 year olds are in another group. And 13 and up, what we call our teens, they're in another group. Mm -hmm. So they all 
in age-appropriate groups with staff who are, who are able to help them in those, you know, if, you, if I, they send me down there right now and say that they got middle school or high school kids and they're doing math problems, I probably wouldn't be very successful at helping them with the answer. Well, you'd send Deja down I would send Deja <laughs> down there. Deja would go down there and help. Uh -huh. But if, you know, if it was something along the line of history and or, or lit, uh, English or something like that, then I can help with that. But you know, we try to put the right people in the right places mm -hmm. to help the kids at the right time. And we're in school right now, but um, and so do you pick up kids from school and bring them here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we have a great partnership with the school system. Good. Um, and they will actually drop most of the kids are dropped off by the school system mm -hmm. right here at, at the club. You know. It, we had this, this, this I guess, kind of arrangement worked out that if a bus passed by the club on their normal route, then they would allow kids to to um, be dropped off here. Right. And parents have to sign that permission and all that. But and then we, we do pick up at other schools. At Deja's school, we pick up at her school mm -hmm. as well. And, and we bring them here to the club. But the first thing we do when they get here is we prepare a hot meal for them and provide a hot meal. Great. Yeah, so... You know, because they've eaten lunch around 11 o'clock or, you know, 11.30. So when they get here, it's hard to say, do your homework when you're hungry. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard to pay attention when your stomach is growling. So we try to make sure that they, you know, get a hot, nutritious meal. And, well, some of these kids, that's probably going to be the only thing they get for the rest of the night. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we, we provide that for them, help them with their homework. And then after that, they get to go into a lot of our uh, breakout areas, which we do some character and, and leadership uh, development. We do healthy life skills. Uh, we do sports, fitness, and recreation. Mm -hmm. And we also have an education and career development area. So kids get to do a rotation. And because, you know, sometimes you have a kid who may be not strong in the gym, mm -hmm. but they're going to be in the gym with their friend. They may be strong in the arts. So when it's time to go to art, they may be the top person in that class versus when they're in athletics. So you know, they give an opportunity to shine uh, in their own uh, in their own areas mm -hmm. when we do the rotation. So all kids get an opportunity to become well-rounded in our club. And what about in the summer when school is out? What's available here then? Yeah, summer is a very important time of the year for us. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the kids want to have fun, and they come. The number one thing is we want to have fun. We want to remember the club, and mm -hmm. I want them to have that club, that ultimate club experience. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we know that one of the biggest problems our schools have is summer learning loss. Mm -hmm. Kids spend that two or three months out of, out of school. When they come back, they're behind. And they take the first couple months trying to catch them up, and now they're behind for the rest of the year. So we try to, we do what we call a brain game, summer brain game, where they actually gaining knowledge over the summer to prepare them for they go back to school mm -hmm. and also and we do that in the morning time now because <laughs> after, after after lunch kids don't want to sit down and try to do it and learn they want to so we, we have to be very creative with our learning and we do we do what we call high year learning activities where they're actually learning but they think they're just having fun mm -hmm. and you know stuff like that may mean you know we, we might pair them up and say in 30 seconds, how many body parts can you say or name with three letters? Well, in order to do that, they got to work on together as team or teammate. They got to know some anatomy. You got to know their body parts. They got to be able to count and they got to be able to spell. And so those type of activities, they're, they're learning, but they're having fun with it. Mm -hmm. You know, basketball, math, you know, in order to take a shot, in order to take a shot, you got to answer a math question. Oh. You know, things of that nature mm -hmm. helps us to not only make sure that they're learning, but at the same time they're having fun. Funding. We've only got a couple minutes. This, this, with all the needs and the staff and, and the wonderful meals and whatnot, where does your funding come from? We get, we, we get a lot of our funding from, from grants, um, state, mostly state grants. We get a little federal funding, mm -hmm. but we, we're striving towards more individuals, foundations, and corporations to help sustain us because you know as everyone knows today a grant might be available tomorrow it may be gone mm -hmm. and how do you tell and it's not necessarily the staff that's connected to that but when a staff member leaves us that means that, that a certain number of kids may have to go as well mm -hmm. we may have to limit our program to an x number of kids because we have a staff to child ratio mm -hmm. and you know in this 
We would love to serve you know, 300 kids in this site, but we got to have the staff to be able to, to support that. And, and in order to have that, you got to have funding. And how many kids are you serving here now? Well, on a daily basis right now in the after school, we're doing about 134 kids a day. Mm -hmm. In the summertime, we'll go up a little over 200 kids a day. Mm -hmm. um, right now, our enrollment for the year is right around a little over 800 kids a year. That, well, obviously, you've, you're doing a great job. Yeah. Deja, we've got about 30 seconds. Kind of tell us is, in as few words as possible what this club has meant to you. Meant or means? Means. Okay. Um, the club is a breath of fresh air. The club is a strong foundation. The club is a home away from home. The club is family. Okay. Sounds wonderful. Well, and congratulations. Great. Thank you. Uh -huh. yeah. Ron, thank you for the great job well, you're thank doing. Thank you for inviting us. Certainly. Yeah. Our pleasure. Yeah. And thank you. We'll see you next week. Thank mm -hmm. you.